What's up? Welcome to Tales Tomorrow. I am Maro, your storyteller for today, and with me we have some more RPG horror stories. I just want to gush about something. Now that I have my own D&D server to play with my friends, and I finally have other friends that want to DM and stuff, I can finally be a player, and it feels so good. I am starting to understand what forever DMs talk about whenever they are forever DMs. Whenever you're stuck being forever DM, while I do love DMing and stuff, I also like to play characters. Just sometimes just get silly and just see what happens. It's been kind of nice just having friends DM and stuff instead of just like random DMs that I don't even know. With friends, you can mess around, you can kind of let your hair down, people can get used to each other really easily. And even Mary started DMing as well. She ran her first one shot. I got turned into a cat and then had to walk around in a forest full of spiders and murderous rabbits. But either way, it's been kind of nice to be able to be playing as a player for once. Anyway, enough about my game. Let's go ahead and get some RPG horror stories for to die. Paladin tries to make me screw a corpse. First post for me on the sub, so I'm going to keep it short. Slight essay warning. It was my first time properly playing D&D through D&D Beyond, and honestly, it was going quite well. The party was rarely ever in the same session all at once, time zones and stuff. For the session in question, it was a human paladin, problem player, and half elf druid, me. We went into a cave to mine Incendium and such for a fetch quest. In the front of the cave was a dead goblin. There was a whole cult storyline about to happen. It was the DM's way to hint towards it. We took turns investigating and pondering what happened to the goblin when Paladin asked DM if he can revive it. We thought he was going to ask a questions or something, but oh my god, were we wrong. He asked something like, why do you die? Or who killed you first? And then asked the goblin, do you want to screw druid? Me. Then he tried to force me to have sex with a dead goblin. Ha! Huh? I swear to god, man, it's always paladins that have the most out-of-pocket things to say. <laughs> I swear. Can't speak for everyone, but I was extremely weirded out. DM wanted to know what he was trying to do. So he let him roll a 2d100, and only if both were 100s, he would allow it. DM, this is not something you should be allowing. No, you shouldn't be even letting the player roll for it. You know what you do? You say no. I'm not gonna have you force somebody else to have sex with a dead goblin. If somebody wants to do something gross, or make somebody else do something gross, they'll make everybody at the table feel very uncomfortable. You tell them no, it's not gonna happen, and for them to knock it off. Simple as that. He rolled quite bad, and DM made him do some silly things. I couldn't remember. He kept talking about it, and wanted to force me to screw a dead goblin. He tried to do this for about one hour. Me and the DM still wanted to have fun, decided to make it so that if he ever says something weird like this, I cast Blight, extremely powerful in the campaign, and his gods will punish him. See, I'm gonna post some more stuff from this campaign, cause it's extremely funny and goofy. Edit 1. It was the DM's first time DMing and is all around new to D&D. 2. Paladin is no longer in the group and the DM is getting a long talk from me and the rest of the party. DM and Paladin are both teenagers for more context. That's kind of disturbing. Yeah, the DM is new, but even then you should probably let the DM know if something weird is happening in the game and everybody makes it feels everybody uncomfortable, including the DM, especially if the DM is uncomfortable with what's going on, they have the right to put a kibosh on it, to put a stop on it, and make it so that it can't happen again, which they should try to exercise in telling no. If the player is doing something gross, then you tell them no. If the player is doing something weird, you still tell them no, and continue telling them no until they knock it off. Anyway, I need a palate cleanser, so let's get to the next story for today. Player goes rules lawyer. I snapped. Am I the a-hole? So this happened somewhat recently, as of typical of this post. I am a new DM, running my first campaign. The player we'll call rules lawyer for this story is an experienced DM, as claimed to have ran many games for many years. There are two other players, but Bard is the only relevant one for this story. Might have a lot of mechanics mentioned as this is a rules lawyer problem. Or maybe I'm the problem. The main antagonists of the campaign are the seven demon lords based around the seven deadly sins, reflected by their personalities and monster sheets. They have fought them multiple times and are very aware of what they can do. There are certain conditions that must be met for the demon lord to be killed permanently. They have perma-killed two so far, with rules lawyer being the one to figure out how to meet these conditions. Oftentimes, doing it in a way I did not intend it should be, but he saw mechanical flaws in my wording and used that against me. But I'll let that be. One day, they will focus on the Demon Lord of Lust, we will call her BBEG for the story. They find out that BBEG is a succubus, what a surprise! They found out that BBG can only be killed if there's no one charmed by her. A single source of damage drops her to 0 HP, creature she has charmed takes the damage instead. 
Her charm lasts indefinitely and can charm up to five people. Her charisma modifier. Right, so for the explanation of the story, we gotta make sure that the rules are on the table. We know what the BBG is, we know how to defeat the BBG. Now, let's see what happens in the rest of the story. I'm assuming this is mentioned for a reason, right? The mechanical expansion, by the way, I love having mechanics for boss fights and stuff. This is cool though, I love this. The players have to follow the mechanics of the fight and try to figure out how to circumvent the mechanics in order to defeat the boss and maybe save some innocents, who knows, maybe. BBG reveals to the party that she has charmed five NPCs they know or care about, making this confrontation very tricky. She also revealed to them that she has sent four of them to five different regions, making it near impossible to find them and uncharm them with greater restoration or dispel evil all at once without letting BBG simply charm other people as soon as someone gets uncharmed. Bard jokingly attempts to charm BBG, saying she will outlust lust, to which I reveal that the embodiment of lust is immune to charm. To which Bard responds, well, expected. This will be important. I end the session in a cliffhanger. Rules lawyer claims he figured it out, and that we'll be all blown away by his plan on how Lust will be killed without harming the people she has charmed. All week, he keeps hyping up his master plan, claiming that the DM did not think this through. Finally comes next session, Rules lawyer is super hyped and all, says that he is always the one to figure it out. His plan? Dominate person. Wait, but is not a charm? And don't they already know that Succubus is already immune to charm? Is not like the whole point of it? The, 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 the succubus, the, the goddess of lust, the succubus of lust is just immune to all charms because that's the whole mechanic, right? His whole argument is that he can command BBG to drown herself. I'm like, what? He says the BBG's ability only concerns HP and damage. Suffocation, however, is a timer thing that has something to do with con scores. Honestly, I don't really get it, but this is his argument. He says he casts it. In my mind, I'm like, ah, oh, crap, here we go again. I remind him that she's immune to charm, as seen with the bard's attempt to charm like last time. If he'd lie, he can take it back and not cast it. Charm immunity means no dominate person. He is not having it. From the top of my head, this is how the conversation went. From rules lawyer. Succubus are not immune to charm. Me. I homebrewed her stats. Rules lawyer. New DMs shouldn't be homebrewing stuff, especially for high-level games. It's about rewarding your players. It's not all about what the rules say. Me. Fine, you cast it. I roll in front of everyone. Bam, she saves anyway. Bart. Silvery barbs. Me. Rolls in front of everyone again. Still saves. Save twice. Now let's move on. This comment about new DMs not being able to homebrew, yes, you can homebrew, you are allowed to homebrew, especially if it's a BBEG, one of the seven unique BBEGs. There's nothing wrong with homebrewing special features for your boss, specifically if your boss is part of that seven deadly sins, the one who presents lust, that's a succubus, and can be charmed. If the whole shtick is to be able to charm others, that obviously makes sense that they could have some sort of a counter charm or be immune to charm in general. There's nothing wrong at all in the slightest to adding these sort of special unique traits to your boss characters. And for the guy to complain the DM should just reward the player, you should be rewarded after you figure out how to do stuff. Part of the reward is working through it. If you get everything just served to you on a silver platter, there's no satisfaction from it. Or at least the reward just feels meaningless at that point if you could just circumvent everything. The enemy is immune to charm. You charm anyway. Oh, that charm now apparently. That's not how it works. Besides, having immunity to charm is not really overpowered in this sense. You could do other things as well. You have to really think you think about the concept, the mechanics. You know what you still could also do? Stun. Grapple. Incapacitate. Paralyze. Literally every other condition, because they're not immune to those conditions, I don't think. Now, Rules Lawyer has tried and succeeded pulling up shenanigans like this before. I, being a new DM, just assumed he knew better and went along with his arguments on how things should work. As the campaign goes on, I slowly realized Rosler is misinterpreting many things, or straight up wrong about it. So I can't just let it be this time, plus another player, Bard did not get past BBG's charm immunity, so it'd be unfair to let it work for Rules Lawyer. Rules Lawyer decides to keep attacking the BBG, prompting her ability to make her charm targets take the damage instead putting NPCs alike at risk. Bard is like WTF. He just keeps saying things like, 
we are being railroaded. This is what a railroad looks like, and it's what the DM wants us to do. No other solution. He also says stuff under his breath the whole time, like, new DM plus homebrew equals mess. I try to ignore it, but everyone has their limits. I ask him, is there a freaking problem? He then erupts in reply, and I'm paraphrasing because I don't remember every word he said in this long rant. Succubus aren't even supposed to be immune to charm. I'm being punished for thinking outside the box. I figured out how to solve your stupid boss fight in a different way than you planned. But of course, being inexperienced, you choose your plans over agency. Now my response probably wasn't the best, but I was pissed. I'm the freaking DM. What I say goes. And I say session ends and you're booted. He stormed out after he throws a bunch of insults at me and my game. It hurt, honestly. If the enemy you're fighting is immune to charm and you're trying to charm them, that's not you thinking outside the box. How is that you thinking outside the box? It's the same thing as if you decided you entered into a boss fight with a flame elemental that is immune to fire and you decide, this DM is an idiot. I have a perfect spell. I could supercharge my fireball so that it does extra damage. And then you fling the fireball. And then suddenly DM says, well, you fling the fireball, but the, the, the elemental is immune to fire damage. Oh, DM, why do not let me think outside the box? Why are you not letting my agency happen? But this rules lawyer is ignoring the fact that the enemy is clearly immune to charm. So they thinking that they should just be able to charm the enemy anyway because of agency. That's not rules lowering in the slightest. Just because you know the stab block for the specific type of enemy doesn't mean the DM is going to use the same stab block or modify it. Especially for one of the BBGs, the seven deadly sins. You wouldn't think the DM would try to homebrew something to make him feel extra special and unique. You knew ahead of time the immune to charm. You knew ahead of time they have a mechanic where they can hurt if your friendly NPCs whenever they get hurt. You knew ahead of time, and instead of thinking, actually thinking outside the box and thinking about plan, you decided, I'm gonna ignore the DM's description and just do what I wanna do. And if it doesn't work, I'm just gonna complain and bitch and moan and be a piss baby about it because I'm gonna complain about player agency. Because if I decided I wanna do, it's up to the UDM to make it so that I can do it because it's all about me being cool and epic and hip and player agency this argument about player agency is so contrived and tripe at this point with this guy this guy is not a rules lawyer he's a whiner he's whining that he just doesn't get his way he's not whining because it's against the rules he's whining because he doesn't get his way this guy's not a rules lawyer he's just a whiny baby He's literally just a whiny piss baby bitch. That's all he is. The following few days, he tried to start his own campaign and recruited my remaining two players. None of them joined. The fact that none of them joined and continue to play with mine puts a smile to my face. So, am I the a-hole? Are we both a-holes? I know for sure I did not handle the situation very well. I guess in a sense, I guess if you really want to think about it this way, going, I'm the freaking damn, it's my way or the highway and get out. I guess that could be seen as a jerk thing, potentially. Maybe it can be a little bit a hole -ish. But at the end of the day, your words will kind of came from frustration, not malice. The guy is just being a butthole, a nuisance. He just wants to get his way and then complain when it doesn't happen his way. Player agency, but as a player, I should be rewarded for my actions. Not if your actions are literally stupid. If the enemy is immune to charm, why are you trying to charm them, you idiot? Don't you think immunity matters? And you know the enemy is immune. You know the enemy is immune, and you decide to ignore the DM entirely, and just do whatever you want to do, and then complain because, but play agency, I need to be rewarded. No, you don't need to be rewarded. You need to think, actually think outside the box. I don't know, be creative for once, instead of just following off of what the original rule says and complain about homebrew. You as a DM are allowed to make homebrew. You're allowed to add homebrew to your game and homebrew anything. The rules in a book, all the stat blocks, they're all guidelines. They're literally all guidelines. If you want to make your BBG succubus the sin of lust, immune to charm, you as a DM are perfectly allowed to do that. Go for it. Make that. In fact, I think that's one of the coolest mechanics ever. And having to be linked to like five NPCs that people know, the players actually know, and try to figure out a way to circumvent this whole thing. That's a cool mechanic. It's a really cool boss mechanic. It adds stakes to the campaign. It adds stakes to the fight. It adds stakes to the encounter. And it's 
perfect. I think it's great. So no, DM, I don't think you're an a-hole in the slightest. We got frustrated because of a really annoying piss baby just trying to piss all over the place and piss on your fun. But at the end of the day, you're not trying to ruin the player experience. You're trying to make sure the players have a good time. And this guy just tried to crap in your parade for whatever reason. I don't know why he's doing that. But either way, DM, you are not the a-hole in my book. And with that, that's going to be all our stories for today. I want to thank you very much for watching and thanks so much for being here. If you like what I do, consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a like. Also, if the RPG horror stories ever goes down or if you want to submit your own personalized horror story, email is down in the description below. I'll see you again in more Tales tomorrow. Bye-bye.